cat. It's Maximus here. Just some a short video because I'm pretty tired. This is something I ended up picking up at an estate sale a while ago. Never made a video about it because I didn't really have much to polish, but figured I'd do it now because I'm pretty tired. I'm not going to tear it down because the difference between polisher, angle polishers, sanders, grinders, they're all exactly the same tool with the difference being three things availability and types of variable speed gear ratio the max you know the maximum rpm the tool is capable of and motor power only really exceptional angle grinders have variable speed otherwise they're always fixed and they tend to be really fast sanders really fast being like you know the industry standard was 6000 rpm at 7 inches it's now increased all the way up to like 8500 seven inch sanders uh, it's 4500 to 5000 rpm and on polishers it's 2500 to 3500 rpm and then that's the difference here so this dwp 849x is pretty ubiquitous and i had to talk about all the other stuff in the beginning because the reality is, is you want a variety of tools to tell you the truth there's some things that polish that if you use an 88000 or 8500 rpm angle grinder they're going to polish in a different way than something that spins slower. And there'll be certain situations where you want that. The big deal about something that's intended as a polisher is not that it's just variable speed, but that it has a specific dial speed control. Secondly, there's lots of forms of electronic variable speed, like basic drills. You just pull the trigger and it speeds up and slows down when you apply a load. Uh, it slows down. You kind of have to compensate, do load compensation yourself. Then there's a, uh, electronic type loads compensation, which is really used in like mixing drills, jigsaw, like a lot of Bosch tools and even Makita's use that. And then there are certain tools which tend to be just polishers, although there are a few uh, other tools that use sensor feedback. There's actually a magnet and a little RPM sensor in here. So when you set the dial at 600 RPM, even though I just quickly pulled the trigger, it's going to limit itself to 600 RPM. An example here, actually a piece of sandpaper that will actually load it up a bit more than, well it depends on the compound and waxes that you're using. We're at the lowest speed. Just like that, it bog it sounds like it's bogging down, but that's actually just load on the motor. For a second, it slows down, and then it, you know it bogs down a little bit, and then it catches itself, and then it maintains a pretty constant speed even with quite a bit of load on it. I mean, I was putting enough load to actually cause the paper to crinkle. One of the slight, I guess, misconceptions is simply the fact that versus the no load speed, even with a sensor based speed control, you end up, it still slows down a little bit. So if it were 600 RPM no load, just spinning in free air, once you load it up, the compensation will take over, but it'll still slow down to maybe 500 or 550 RPM. But it definitely is good load compensation as soon as i applied that pressure even if i was applying a lot of pressure it just wasn't totally bogging down it was automatically applying more power to the motor so you can get the this is like 250 bucks the makita is like 280 i mean they're considered really good brands which are the dewalt i think matabo a makita you know like a fine or a fest some you know there's a few brands of these that are considered really good and the dewalt's actually among them it's actually one of the most popular is crazy this one was actually purchased in God, I can barely see that here but it says 2015 so this thing's almost 10 years old but it's still the current model they had the DWP 849 then they went with the X the X was supposedly had a different and upgraded speed control to really improve it another thing to note 
these screens are the, the idea is to prevent, to help filter out particles from getting through the motor, and they generally work. The problem is, especially if you're working with a lot of fiber and wool polishing pads, is that uh, just too many fibers and things get caught in the screen and block it off, and then you end up with overheated motors and burning out motors. Uh, a lot of the professionals, especially people who are using these for several hours a day, polishing boats and you know aluminum semi truck wheels, all that kind of stuff, they just remove the screens because that way they can just periodically hit it with a uh, an air hose. And the fact that the screens just get clogged too fast compared to just removing them and being you know. Uh, and just cleaning out the wider, broader vents that are under it. So it's kind of a good idea, but it unfortunately it actually works too well and causes it to get starved for air too quickly. And something to make a note. The real differences between the big professional manufacturers and even like the $100 Harbor Freight Bauer is just subtleties on how the speed control works and how that load compensation works. For me, this DeWalt is great. It seemed, I looked up the reviews of a bunch of the different ones that are available now, including the Bauer and the Makita. They all have about a 10%, 15% negative review rating, but pretty much all the brands are about 80 to 85% positive reviews, regardless of who you're looking at. Manufacturers, all, it just seems all the pro, man, just about everybody is willing to accept anything from a 5 to a 10%. Um, or even more uh, failure rate on their tools. They'll pass a quick test in the factory, but that doesn't mean anything one, unless you actually load it up and put some <clears throat> a few hours on the tool to actually find that it's gonna be a quote unquote good one. And this one I've actually used for a bit of that sanding work just because uh, it's real convenient when you wanna do a more delicate sanding job. First, you're starting off with a slower RPM and then secondly, you have a nice constant speed control. So once you apply the load, and it, it, it picks it up. So there's just not a lot else to say. I think the DeWalt's versus, once again, the Makita's and even you know, the Harbor Freight Bowers. I'd just say wait till you can get one that's uh, on sale or is a good deal. I mean, obviously, when I bought this one from that estate sale, somebody had bought this many years ago probably used it a couple three times and then sat in their garage until they died quite <laughs> literally what happened but at least it went to somebody like me who will care for it there's a, just a huge variety of wheels people might wonder why on earth you know is it 12 amps 12 amps at 3500 rpm is actually a huge amount of torque for an you know an angle grinder style tool like this a 15 amp angle grinder at 8500 rpm has a heck of a lot less torque than a 12 amp tool at 3500 rpm the big difference is, is these aren't designed to have any kind of guard put on them and they have a, just a bit longer of a spindle but it's also necessary because there's a, a just a huge array of uh polishing pads some of those things are you know 9 10 12 inches in diameter they're like these stacked cotton things, and then you use the edge of them. They're, those styles are used a lot on metal polishing, and those place a huge amount of load. You know, you put in a 9 to 12 inch, uh, you know, stacked cotton pad that you're using the edge with, and then you're putting a bunch of force on it, uh, you're going to need the extra torques. And so that's why they have such powerful motors, is because there are wheels that you can get that or totally outsized and require a ton of torque to drive. Anyway, not a lot else to say. These also come with just a regular side handle that you can use. They also have this wraparound D style handle. It can be flipped either direction. It has little cogs in it so you can loosen the bolts and you can get it to adjust in the you know various positions. This plastic thing is just supposed to be a bumper to prevent you know the metal gearbox from dinging stuff. Although a lot of people remove this too just to help the gearbox get a little bit better cooling. Not much, but it is a little bit because the plastic is an insulator. And if you're getting into tighter spaces, it, it's not much extra, you know, bulk, but it is a little bit. Anyway, there's only one other thing to really say, and that is they're charging a premium on these polishers. And I'm not exactly sure why. You can get a big 9-inch... 6500 rpm 15 amp the modern 
new DeWalt 9 inch grinder for 175 bucks. This is 250 and the difference between those two tools is the grinder actually comes with the guard, which is a bunch of extra material and manufacturing work, where this has a sensor based speed control. And they're, as far as the retail prices are charging, 60 to 75 dollars for that option. Um, and you don't get any kind of guard. Instead, you just get a different type of handle. And that's something I've never figured out. I think it's they're almost taking advantage of the uh, situation where people need good, powerful, and professional-grade polishers, where angle grinders are seen as more of a commodity tool. And the manufacturer's taxi for it. And it's kind of annoying because really this tool new should be, you know, 200 bucks would be more than reasonable. Anyway, thanks for watching.